All right, I finally got around to do one of the videos that has been the most requested for a very long time, and that is how I expose my Canon R6. And the same in this case goes for the R5 as well. So the technique that I use is called Cepress. And first of all, uh, I want to show you how that works inside the camera, how you set it up, and then we'll look at what the different Cepress are and how they work in case of actually using them in a practical uh, environment like we are shooting in now. All right, so when we are on the R5 or the R6, we head into the menu and on the red menu, the first menu, and then menu seven, you have the Zebra settings. So how it works is that you have two different Zebras. You can also select to just show one or the second, but I always have it on as the one plus two. And then for the Zebra one, we'll get to that in a second. I always change these two depending on what I shoot. And the Zebra two, is always set to the highlights. So in my case, it's set to 80%, and that means that it will show a certain type of stripes on everything that is 80% or higher on the RE levels that we just covered before. So in case of showing you what that looks like, if we go in here and look at the screen, we should be able to see that if we now turn it up so it's a bit brighter, and maybe turn up the ISO quite a bit as well, you will now start to see that there are these stripes that go in this direction, and there are a lot of them. That means that it is uh, very overexposed, and that is what the Zebra 2 is showing us of the 80% right now. So if we turn this back down to the normal settings again here, and we head into menu two, this is where our exposure is actually used. So the Zebra 2 is pretty much just to see that the highlights is not blowing out. If you see the Zebra 2, then you will know that you have to maybe adjust something or make sure that it's not the case that it is completely overexposed. Hey, Alex from the future here. I realized when I was editing the video that I never got around to tell you what IRE are. So I decided to just pop in quickly and tell you what that is. IRE stands for Institute of Radio Engineers. So not really anything particular we can use that for, but essentially what it is, is a value level of uh, ranging from black to white Pure, pure black to pure white, ranging the video signal that comes into the camera. So ranging the light, essentially. So what we can use this for is for different exposures. It depends a little bit in what log profile you shoot with, but in this case for C-Log3, we are going for 35% and 55%, and we can kind of use that for our skin tones and for other things for exposing. So it's just important to know what we're talking about here. So apart from all the technical terms that we could dive into with this, just, just leave it for that and just know that it kind of values how much light is in the scene, uh, depending on what it's focused on. So for Zebras, we can set a few values to check the different exposure levels that we want to expose for and in false color that we'll talk about later in the video, we can see the whole range of how our image is looking, but we'll get to that in a second. I just wanted to interrupt quickly, so let's get back to the video. Now for the other ones, if I'm not shooting a person, meaning that I don't have any skin tones in the shot, I will be using Zebra 1, and I will set that to 35 plus minus 5%. So that is set this way. And now if we go in here again, we should be able to see all the darker areas here. We have Zebras that are turning the other way. And this is how we know that now, if I turn it off, you can see that all the branches was what was had zebras on here. So now those will be exposed for the zebra 35. And in this case, that would be perfectly fine for me. If we were to poodle up the histogram as well, we can see that most of the information lies down around here, which would also be equal to around uh, 35 of the RE scale. So that's how we can see that now. It's a little bit give and take with the Zebra 35. You can overexpose, underexpose a little bit. It's easier to work with afterwards if you've shot it in the Zebras. If it's not skin tones, but skin tones tend to crack up in the colors a lot faster. So if we go to that instead, in this case, we're shooting for the Canon R6 and R5 in terms of C-Log3, we're shooting the 55 plus minus 5%. And that will give us the indication that we should have 55 RE level and that should be the brightest part of our skin tone. So if we put on record here, and I move in front of the shot again, now I should hopefully have Cepras at least 
somewhere on my face, unless I screwed up the settings a second ago. But in terms of this, now the sun is coming from this direction up here. So it should have zebras somewhere on my face in this area, which is the brighter part of my face. And that is how you know that the skin tones are correctly exposed. And that's how I shoot with it every day. Now, in the beginning, it takes a little bit of time getting used to if the is the zebras turning the one way or the other way. So you could decide to just shoot with zebra one. And in that case, you won't see if the highlights are being overexposed or underexposed. But in this case, it makes sense for me to shoot it this way so that I know that if I see the highlights are clipping, I can maybe dial it back a little bit and then have my skin tones a little bit underexposed, but know that I retain the information in the highlights behind me. And that way I have more information for when I start grading my footage afterwards. So in terms of exposing for C-Log3, this is how I have done it for more than a year now, and it works perfectly for me every single time. It's just a matter of getting used to how to do it. All right, so now I've turned the camera around and we're shooting in a little bit of a harsher condition. So right now we have a clear sky in the background, which will be a lot brighter. And then I'm standing in the shade still, so the contrast will be a lot sharper between the highlights and the shadows because I'm still standing in shadow with a, a brighter background. And as you can see on the zebras now, I should still have zebras in my face. So you can see correctly that I am exposed correctly in my face. But you can also see that because we are using Zebra 80 Plus for the Zebra 2, that the background is now completely covered in zebras as well, which is indicating that we have to be careful that we're not blowing out the highlights. Now, this is one of the compromises that we have with zebras when we use those, because we cannot see other than these two values. Now, I am already considering just looking at some other things and false color that we'll get to in a second, if I should actually put it up to 90 instead. But 80 is a good indication that we need to be careful with uh, not overexposing too much. In this case, we still have the correct exposure here and I already checked that with the histogram, I could see that we were not clipping the highlights. So in this case, we will still be fine. But another thing that I am planning to upgrade on in the future and what we are shooting on now, we are now shooting on a external monitor that has the ability to show false color. So if we turn off the zebras, like so, and then turn on false color instead, now we'll actually be able to see that I both have pink and green in my face, which indicates that the exposure is correct. We have some of the brighter areas that is pink, that is the skin tone color, and some gray areas that we can see will still be good in terms of the exposure. We can also see that the background is yellow, which means it's only in our E90 and not in 100, which would mean completely overexposed. So we still have the detail in the background. And now we have a lot more information to look at when we are looking at the monitor and in the false color. So it's a lot easier to see if we're exposing correctly or if we're losing information perhaps in the shadows, or in this case, in the highlights that we have in the background. And with all that said, that was pretty much what I wanted to cover today. Now, as said in the video, I have been using Seapress for more than a year now to expose my videos and I've had more than incredible results after switching to that from just trying to do it with exposing to the right 1.7, whatever uh, the recommendations usually are for either Canon or Sony. Uh, I've been using Seapress and I've been super, super happy with it. Now, as you also saw in the video, my next step is to get a monitor so I can actually start using false color because just testing that out a little bit with a monitor, I quickly realized that that's gonna help me even more to see and read through the whole thing. But I would recommend that if your camera has Seapress, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you have an R6 or an R5, something similar, then I would highly suggest that you get used to using Seapress because it's a much more reliable way of getting exposure rather than exposing to the right where you are evaluating the whole scene rather than what you actually want to expose for, which in this case could be the skin toes or something else. So with all that said, I'll just leave you here and uh, thank you for watching and thank you for supporting the channel and until the next time, take care.